Hi, everyone, and you got it locked to the Fire Up Network, and it's the Tanya Mulling Show. And tonight, my guest is Juno nominated singer, songwriter, award winning, and we call her the First Lady. Tanya P is here. Thank you so much for being on the show, girl. Hey, Tanya. Thanks for having me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're welcome, hon. Thank you so much for being here. I know you're busy. And before I even get in to the interview, because I know you have your scheduled program that you have every Sunday night, and I got to big up Molly Bless for holding it down for you over there at Styliners Live on Facebook. So big up, Ozzy. <laughs> it's been, oh, yes, oh, yes. Starliners, see, I'm representing. <laughs> yes, I know, I know. Thank you so much. I know you do your live thing. And before we get into that, talk a little bit about Starliner, what it is about that you do. Well, um, basically, you know, when things got crazy with the pandemic, we were all sitting home, didn't know, you know, what to do with ourselves. Um, one day, Molly decided he wanted to go live on Facebook and start playing some music. And I was like rolling my eyes. <laughs> I was like, no. Everybody and their uncle is going live right now and playing. Yeah. If you're going to do something like that, just do something different, you know? Why not play Canadian? Mm -hmm. You know, just do something, do something that's not the norm right now. Because everybody else, all the big artists, they're always getting their play, you know? So I want to defend the Canadian artist, though. <laughs> yes, and I heard him mushing it up the other day playing your brand new debut album, Back to Back. What a solid album. And of course, that's what we're here to talk about. Concrete Rose, your debut album, dropped this past Thursday, January 21st. How does that feel? Honestly, it's a dream come true. It's amazing. Um, I feel like all my years doing music, it's like it's I've been doing everything that I've been doing, going through everything that I've been going through. It's kind of just been leading me up to this point right now. I've dreamt about it, you know? <laughs> so it's... it's yeah. a um, it's kind of surreal, especially when I see everybody kind of gravitating to certain songs. It's like, wow. <laughs> yeah, I know. You're so humble, girl. You're so cute. God love you. Again, follow her on Instagram at Tanya, Tanya P Music. I was ready to say mine. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> habit, habit. Uh, yes. Follow her again on Instagram at Tanya P Music. And you know what? I want to take this opportunity and the reason why I'm going to do this, I want to run down every song on the album because it has not been an easy road for you and you are one strong, strong person. And I know every single song and most of us artists do, you know, you write from the heart and there's a meaning behind each song, but I think your album ha definitely has a story to it. And I want to take this time and I'm going to jump down the line first. I'm not going to start with number one. I want to start off with number 12, one produced um, by your son. I got it. You got to talk about that one. That's 13. That's 13. Oh, sorry. I wrote it out. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> um, and it's funny because 13 is my favorite number and I didn't even plan to have him in that slot. It just made sense when I was doing the, the track list. It just, yeah, like it fits right there. And then when I saw 13, I was like, wow. Okay. Even better. But, um, yeah, so that's produced by my son, who's my firstborn. His name is Shamar, um, mm -hmm. prophet. And it's funny because you know he's he's both of my older boys make beats. That's pretty much like all they do with their time once they're not working is making beats. And yeah. I'm always saying, "Make me a reggae rhythm, no, <laughs> you know." <laughs> but you got the crossover feel, so you know. Something, give me something that I can work with, you know? And um, yeah. I don't know, I've been waiting for years. And then finally I heard he was playing that one day, he was playing that beat, and I was like, whoa, send me that one. <laughs> You're like, can I have that one? <laughs> and he was like looking at me strange. I'm like, yeah, I want that one. And then, yeah, I had it the drunk for about a year. I had it for about a year, and every time I listen to it, I'm just like, I thought of so many different melodies, so many different um, topics. And yes. One day, that song just came to me. And I was like, that's it. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. And he's probably sitting there. What's taking you so long, oh. mom? I know that feeling because I got my son there saying like I'm pull, um, pulling my heels, man. <laughs> We're not quick like these young kids, eh? <laughs> um, then it was like, so when's it coming out? When's it coming out? When's it coming out? I'm like, oh, my goodness. But <laughs> finally here and even the response from it, it's like, wow, OK, that's not what I expected. Yes. It's so different for me. So I guess I just thought that, you know, the normal, you know, the regular Tanya P listeners, that's going to be too different for them. So maybe they're not going to really be into that. But I loved it. So I was like, I'm putting it on my album, you know? So just yeah. kind of just ran with them like, wow, okay, well, that's not what I expected. Yeah. Well, like I said, like you said, the regular Tanya P listeners, but you are versatile. Like you're, you know, I'm sure, I don't know if you've got this comparison, but every time I hear you, I hear Mary J. Blige. I've gotten that like my whole <laughs> much. Yes. And I know, I know you can make original song, but I think you would kill a remix of a Mary J. Blige song in reggae. Have yeah. you ever done one? I have. Well, not, not a remix, but I used to sing a lot of Mary. Like that's how I started, you know, with Mary J. Blige and Brandy and Monica, like, I like I I grew up like I started singing the R and B, like that's how I even started doing music in the first place. Because when I started singing, I couldn't even get the instrumentals for the ones that I I wanted to sing. So I would just go on reggae rhythms and just sing the R and B songs. So that's how yeah I started. Okay, so I want to run down. I might not have it in the right order, um, but we'll run down each track. And if you want to talk a little bit about maybe the meaning behind each track and how it came about, um, Can't Get Enough. Mm. Can't Get Enough. When I think of that song, I think of Molly Bless. <laughs> Aww. Um, That's I the one I put on the post. I I I, there's a lot of them I like, but I don't know. I took to that one. I was, I don't know. I just knew when I wrote that, I remember saying, babe, I wrote you a song. Like, this is definitely about you, you know? And yeah. And then everybody just, anybody that heard it just loved it. Like, you know, my friends, family, whoever was listening, they were just like, whoa, there's definitely something special about that. Yeah. So a lot of feeling, a lot of feeling in there, you know? Like, if you know me and you know my story, like, I've, I've been through so much and I'm telling you, like ever since I met that man, like my whole life has changed. It's the truth. Yes. You can yeah. like I said when I watched the other night him playing, he is so proud of you. You can see it. Then you two are just like it's so cute, the two of you. And and like I said, the reason why I'm gonna run down all these songs is because like it hasn't been an easy road for you. And you you can feel that in your music and in your lyrics and everything. Talk about uh ease your pain. Ease Your Pain, you know, when I first wrote Ease Your Pain, um, it was actually a challenge that I was given by a producer. He was saying, you know, all these ladies, when I hear these certain songs, like they're always bashing the men, you know, I wanna hear an uplifting song. I challenge you to just write a song with just uplift your mind, <laughs> you know? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. <laughs> and then that kind of just came to me, like when I thought mm -hmm. of it, you know, a lot of guys go through a lot of stuff in relationships where, I don't know, we always tend to give guys the bad name, you know, when the breakup, yeah. happen, oh, what did he do type of thing? But yeah. sometimes it's not even about that. Sometimes, you know, he's doing all the right things, but then certain things there's mm -hmm. just happen out of your control. Like mm -hmm. um, the scenario I used in Easier Pain was like, um, you used to work two job, buy expensive things, no worry about price tag. And you know what I mean? And then all of a sudden recession hit money now I run. Yeah. So it was just one of those things where it's I'm saying it doesn't matter what happens, you know, whatever it is, good or bad, I'm here. You know, I'm here to ease your pain. Yes. And to my viewers, I'm talking to Tanya P. She has a brand new album out, Concrete or Rose, available now. Go get it available on all platforms. Um, talk a little bit about what you know about love. What you know about love, um I've had I've had my is a lot of ups and downs, you know, in, in my love life and experiences. So it's just one of those things where people like to use that word love, like so loosely. Yes. A lot of, especially a lot of men, it's like, oh, you know, I love you. I love you. But sometimes you're in a relationship and you're doing so much for that person, but 
all the love and you know all the work that you're putting in is not really being reciprocated yes it, it was just one of those things where i was just trying to turn it around like how would you feel if i came home late at night you know leaving you at home to hold your pillow tight yeah certain things like that you know what you know about love and i found that a lot of people even the men surprisingly were like oh i love that one so yeah, what you know about love. And um, this one has a video out. You can check it out on, uh, what's your YouTube channel again? Uh, we're going to say Something's Gotta Give. We have the video for that one. Yeah, yeah, Something's Gotta Give. <laughs> um, that one was, oh boy, Something's Gotta Give. Um, to be honest, like when I first wrote Something's Gotta Give, once I started writing it, the first few lines, all I had was, um, Something's got to give. This ain't no way to live. And every time I came up with them, I'm just like, okay, this is crazy. Um, this is too much. It just sounded like I was complaining. You know what I mean? Like I was really yeah. hurt. And I don't know. I was like, that's not the type of song that I wanted to put out. But I only had those two lines, mm -hmm. right? And then yeah. I tried to say, you know what? Let me put that to the side. Because I think, you know, sometimes as an artist, you're in the mood to write a certain type of song. Yeah. Every time I was going to write, that song kept coming back. It was like allowing me to write anything further until I dealt with that song. And yes. It was almost a, an annoyance because something's got to give to me was just like so deep and something that I really just never even wanted to talk about. So I tried mm -hmm. my on the back burner. I didn't want to talk about that. I didn't want to talk about what was really going on because there was a lot. Like, yes. I was so down. And I don't know. I think it taught me that um, some of the best songs as a writer, some of the best songs that you could ever write is when you actually just open up yourself to just really be that vulnerable and just tell people what's really going on. Yeah. Let it out. Yeah. And there yeah. Were, like, I think it was more like, I think um, from losing my dad, you know, having to move and just having my daughter, like there was just so many things hitting me at the same time life was rough <laughs> yeah yes what's the youtube channel again so they can go check that video out tanya p music okay t-o-n-y-a p yeah and i'm gonna keep letting y'all know it's concrete rose the debut album go get it uh right here with me right here with me um i'm getting like a <laughs> so, you know, it's sometimes when you do them, you add them for a while and you got to remember yourself. What was that one about, eh? Yeah, okay. Um, so right here with me, that's the apology. You know, um, a lot of times when things kind of go wrong in relationships, like I was saying, um, a lot of times the men get, you know, the, the bad rep, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. With right here with me, it was just one of those things where I remember saying, like, sometimes we as women, we do things that aren't exactly, you know, nice and correct. And, you know, maybe not so much cheating, but maybe it's just, mm -hmm. you know, speaking down, you know what I mean? And doing certain things that kind of just don't really uplift your man and stuff like that. Yeah. I feel like um, I wrote that because I remember thinking, like, it takes a real woman to actually recognize that and be able to say, you know what, I'm sorry. Yeah. And ask for forgiveness, you know? Mm -hmm. Most of the yeah. time, you really hear those stories. You don't really hear the, the women apologizing and asking for forgiveness for whatever it is, you know what I mean? So I remember just thinking like, you know, I'm gonna be woman enough to say like, hey, I'm sorry, I messed up. And that's where that came from. <laughs> yes, okay, and Lonely Nights. Lonely nights. <laughs> you don't got no lonely nights now, girl. <laughs> lonely nights. I remember um, thinking, I was speaking about a love that I was still looking for. Yes. You know what I mean? Like, I know what I wanted. It was almost like I was describing my life now. Yes. I didn't know all, you know, back then when I wrote it, that that's what I was doing. I didn't know it at the time, but I guess sometimes um, with writing, it's like mm -hmm. either you're a writer that writes on your reality or maybe mm -hmm. 
but it is, you know, something that you're searching for. Maybe it's not even so much something you've experienced, but something that you you want to experience. So I think that's what Lonely Nights was. So for me, when I actually um, ended up getting married and playing Lonely Nights and using it as the, the song for the video. Yes. Everything. It's like, that's when it hit me. When I actually saw the visual, I was like, oh my God, this is it. This is what I was writing about all along, you know? Yeah. And the next, uh, I Lied. I Lied. I Lied is um, just one of those things where sometimes you're trying to tell somebody that you're just not really into being in a relationship. You know, it's like you feel certain feelings and even though you know what you're feeling, what's actually coming out of your mouth and what's actually like what you're actually telling that person is, no, nah, I don't want to be with you. No, nah, I'd rather be by myself. I like being single. I'd rather be alone. You know what I mean? Yeah. When mm -hmm. in actuality, that's not really what you want. That's not really what you mean. And for whatever reason, you're just like, just scared to take that leap. So yes. Yeah. You say all yeah. that. Sometimes it hits you almost yeah. before it's too late. You realize like, what am I doing? No. Yeah. You put, you put the wall up. Mm -hmm. Yes. You're like, no, no. Okay. You know what? I lied. <laughs> yeah. 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 Take my breath away. Take my breath away. That's just like, that's just a sweet, sweet song. When you just, um, you know, when you just meet somebody and it's like, from the moment you see them, from the moment you, your eyes, you know, lock with them, it's just like, wow, you're just blown away. You know, and you yeah. just, they feel the same about you. It's just something, it's just like a, an energy. Yes. Know, what it was, that's what I wrote. It's just, take my breath away. I remember when I was writing that, it was one of those songs. I know you would know this because you're a writer as well. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's like you start the first line and that's it. You're just going and going and going and going. It's yeah, like, it just flows. Yeah. It was like, I just, I was so free, so free when I was writing that song. It was just like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> we got that. Got that. That's, um, I think I, I'm starting to think, now that I'm actually explaining the songs, I realize now I know why they tell me I specialize in the <laughs> <laughs> We got that. Um, it's just basically this, almost the same type of thing, like um, take, take my breath away. But it was just like, you know, that kind of love that just makes you just let go. And you just know, yeah. you just know when you have it. You know, mm -hmm. and it's just like really just kind of just paying homage to that one person. Um, I remember, I remember when I was writing that it was just one of those things where I was saying, you know what, I want, I want it to be cool to, you know, be monogamous just to say, you know, and the love that I want, he gives it to me. We got that. Love. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So Molly, get that one too. Um, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> All in his time, I don't know what was going on. <laughs> he brings the best out to you. <laughs> uh, people, so many people can relate, you know. So yes. many can also relate, you know. Whether you're going through it right now or you felt it before, like it's just like, yes, girl. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And of course, life. That's pretty simple. Life. That. Um, life is just like, it's, it's almost like a letter, like it's yep. a letter to my, to my daughters. Uh, this is, this would be life. You know, things don't always go the way you want it to. A lot of times, you know, you get a lot of disappointments in life and stuff like that. And it's just one of those things where I just want to empower like my daughters, empower other young ladies to just dust yourself off and just keep going like no matter what life throws at you just keep going you know there's all yes the and downs no whatever chips fall just keep going yeah it makes you stronger oh for sure for sure lost too much 
lost too much. Um, now that song, I actually wrote that for my cousin, um, Julian. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not sure exactly what year now. It's been a few years, but he passed away. Um, really, that's tragic. the one in the streets. When you said "lost in the streets," that yeah. track, yeah. So it's like, yeah, that that really. Um, and it's funny because during the time um, that I wrote that, it was something completely different that I had in mind. But then that happened, like at this, I think it was like the same weekend when I was like, you know, working on a song, and it's like that lost too much came to mind like that's it was just formed it was one of, another one of those songs where it just happened so so fast you know because yeah woman it's just so much violence that was going on at the time and yeah i really just i poured my heart into that one because it was it was just so hurtful you know my little cousin it was just sad to see this how how he was taken away like that you know and i know there's yeah. a lot of lose lose a lot of people like that too so yes a lot would definitely relate to that one. Yes, uh, on my own. On my own. For the album, to me, that's almost like my prayer. Mm -hmm. I think it's my prayer. That's how I relate to it. It's just one of those things where I'm really just asking the Most High to just guide me and protect me, you know, and just the world that we're living in, you know, and even with um, the steps that I'm taking and, you know, trying to push my music and stuff like that. There's just so much things that come with it. It's not all glitz and glamour. So no, <laughs> just asking the most high to just cover me in everything that I do, you know, and give me the strength because a lot of times we seem to put our faith, you know, we put our trust in men and that's not it. You know what I mean? The most yeah. high that he's he's in control he has control mm -hmm. i don't really depend on anybody to, you know to give me certain guidance i just look to the most high so that's where that comes from you know that's just my prayer i feel like it just kind of sealed my album like that was the covering <laughs> yes and uh i i want you to take the opportunity which i'm sure you said it a lot of times to her your mom just celebrated her birthday yesterday yeah. Hey, mommy. <laughs> yeah, she likes that. I think she's a big celebrity now, you know. <laughs> yes. <laughs> she must be very proud of you. Oh, for sure. For sure. She, she, she's so funny. Like, um, she kept telling me, on my birthday, I'm going to do a video playing your song. And <laughs> she did it. It was so funny. I posted it on Facebook. She goes, how did it get on Facebook? Because she put it on Instagram. Yes. Recorded but, it, posted but, it. But she should know it doesn't matter Instagram or Facebook, it's still gonna get enough views. <laughs> she can't hide. <laughs> I don't think she understands. She's just like oh. I said it, I said people are loving it on Facebook. She goes, Facebook? What? How it gets on Facebook? <laughs> <laughs> it's no different. <laughs> and we definitely know she's a big supporter of yours. And of course, I'm sure rest in peace return if possible was for your dad. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, that was like, probably one of the hardest songs to write. Um, even now, I'm skipping it. I don't know if I'm ready to like listen to it, you know, yeah. in the in the moment. Because everything else I'm just like, and then when I get to that one, it's like, oh, you know, especially with everything that's going on, like, because he was such a cheerleader for me. You know, and I know that as much as he never really wanted to push me into the music business because he always thought that he, you know, he, I, he didn't really want me in it, to be honest. He just felt like he knew the business and yes. he didn't want that for his daughter for whatever reasons he must have had. I'm sure he had good reasons, though. But, mm -hmm. yeah, it's just yeah. I would really love to see this because as much as he was, you know, kind of hesitant and didn't really want to send me out there, push me out there he was also still just like championing for me, you know, and so happy when I was actually doing certain goals and stuff like that too, so. Yes, and I, I mean, he didn't want you in it because it's not an easy business and he's protecting his little girl because not so many nice people out there in this industry, but uh, you got your head on your shoulders and unfortunately uh, he's not with us anymore. And to my viewers, her father is popul popular promoter 
Clive Kuba Pringle, very well known in the industry in Jamaica, and he passed away. And of course, she has the jeans in her with the music there, that's for sure. So um, I want to talk about a little bit about your dad and what he did in Jamaica with the um, Bob Marley birthday bash, because you carried that on now. Yes, yes. Um, well, he did the Bob Marley birthday bash. He's the founder, of, you know, the Bob Marley birthday bash. And funny enough, he was actually like celebrating Bob Marley's birthday before the Bob Marley Foundation, you know, so a long time, a long time. Um, before he passed, I think it was about 23, 23 years that he did it. Yeah. For. Yeah. And he pretty much just anybody you could ever think of that was anybody in the industry, you know, all the big top of top artists, he had them all grace that stage. You know, he has a entertainment center in the grill. MX3 Entertainment Center, you know, big mm -hmm. outdoor venue that just, it's just like, um, it's a, what, what do you, what's the word? Site. Okay. I can't, I'm getting like lost for words right now, but um, maybe it's because I'm talking about him. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. That's okay. I know it's a, it's an exciting time for you with the album and everything. And I totally feel where you're coming from. And I know that you wish he was here to see it, but he's watching over you. And you did, like I said, carry on the 25th annual Bob Marley birthday bash in 2017. Um, and I, I know you still want to continue it and keep continuing it, but it was nice that you went out there and, you know, got everybody together and also included uh, Canadian artists as well. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, when when my dad was alive, a lot of people used to ask me, you know, can you get me upon the show, get me upon the show? Like people, anybody that found out that he was the promoter for the show would ask me. And I used to always tell them like, it's not that easy. Like, you don't know that man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's not gonna say, yeah man, put them, me put them on. Like it doesn't, he doesn't, he never worked like that. You know what I mean? So yeah, it wasn't that easy for me, but I know that certain people that I used to think really deserve to be on that stage. Um, I just felt like, you know what? I couldn't do it for them then, but I can do it now. You know what I mean? Yes. And, and um, another thing, it's, it's, it's such a good feeling. And I'm sure, you know, uh, when you go down there and everybody comes together after he passed away and no questions asked are willing to be there alongside you being his daughter and see this continue. Right. And one of them was the great Toots Hibbert. Yes. Yes. It's, it hurt my heart when he got sick. Like, honestly, I remember thinking, I was just praying, praying that he would pull through because when we, when we tried to reach out to Toots, first of all, a couple people that I told, they, they kind of looked at me like, you're crazy. You're not going to get toots. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, you don't know who I am. <laughs> yes, exactly. They don't realize like your dad, how much he did. And people, you just say the name and your daughter. And you know what? They want to also continue to watch out for you because they look at you as like their little daughter. That's how close they were to your father. So they will always have your back and make sure you're good, you know? Exactly. Exactly. Um, there's just, you know, unfortunately certain things happen when people pass away and stuff like that. So I've had to go through like a lot of things, even, you know, with his venue and stuff like that. But one thing I will say is that, um, I've gotten a lot stronger since his passing and I've learned yeah. about, um, even with the Bob Marley show, because before I was just so insistent that it had to be at MX3 and it had to be a certain way and it had to be the way that he did it. But yes, I've throughout the years now that it doesn't necessarily have to be exactly the way that he did it. And um, basically his spirit and what he was doing lives in me. So yes. It pretty much is going to be, you know, he's going to be a part of anything that I decide to do. And where yep. it and, you know, however I do it, it is what it is. You know what I mean? And people are still going to love it and they're still going to support it because it's me. You yes. Know, still a representation of him. So yes. Last one definitely showed me because at the last minute I moved it and I, I brought it to a venue on the, on the beach. And I'm yes. you, it was like the best move that I ever made. <laughs> we actually got more. 
out. Yes. It was it was like the pretty much like out of the three that I did, it was like the biggest one. So it, I learned a lot from that one. I definitely learned. Yeah. So we know we're in the pandemic right now, but what what was the last one that you did? The what last, was the last one? Last one I did, I had um the Mighty Diamonds and I had yeah. and um I had Resolution, the all female band from here. Oh nice. I had them on there. I had Donna Makita. Nice. Yeah, and um some drummers, other local acts from down there. It was funny, like um that show was just so like I remember even at rehearsal, because in my mind, right? Um when I was planning the show, you know, in your head, you kind of think of the lineup and stuff like that. And I remember all along, I kept thinking, you know, the Mighty Diamonds, they're going to close the show and it's going to be amazing. Like I had that all planned in my mind. Yes. And when I went to rehearsal and I saw I Wayne rehearsing, I'm like, oh, wow. What was I thinking? This yeah, switch up. <laughs> Line up, just switch up. <laughs> amazing. He was amazing. Like he really brought it. Yes. Okay, you know, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know everything, but I'm a learn today. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody, you know, the younger artists, I mean, he's he's been here for a while, but the younger artists are coming up, you know. Well, and I'm doing a, their thing and representing. You know, when you're thinking of just respect, out of respect, you're doing trying to do things so that everybody feels like, you know, respected and getting their just due. You know, kind of like with yeah. fifth anniversary with Toots, like we all know like Toots was gonna just take that show. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. And then that that time too, you also had uh, uh, Blessed was there, Isaac, Luciano, Charlie Chaplin. That was a nice year, the twenty fifth. Yeah. Yeah. It was four nights. Jesse Royal. We, nice. Yeah. It was. It was proper. Fred Locks. Oh gosh. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Nice. Because he, you know what, my dad talked about his twenty fifth anniversary for the show. He always looked forward to it. So it was just so bittersweet that he wasn't there in, in the physical, you know? So I was like, no, man, we have to do four nights and it's gotta be big. It still wasn't yeah. as he would do it because even when I tell people the lineup, they're like, whoa, that's a big show. I'm like, no, you had to see Kuba's lineups. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I'm trying to hold it up. That's, that's when he put the line down that certain people could only be on the show, eh? <laughs> He's gotta get everybody on top. I'm a baby but, boy. You did good, did good. <laughs> he would definitely be proud of that. And I want to go back because we're here talking about Concrete Rose, her brand new debut album. It's out now, came out Thursday, available on all platforms. Again, follow her on Instagram at Tanya P Music, Tanya P Music on YouTube. Go check out all the videos. But I want to talk about you didn't just come now. You've been singing since the age of 14. Talk a little bit about your upbringing coming. I know you're born in Canada, yeah. but uh, a little bit of the beginning of the music, how you got into it. Okay, well, um, I think my first, I would say my first experience was really just um, talent show, my high school talent show, grade 10. Mm -hmm. I remember I was always like, I've, I was always known to my friends as being like quite the joker. So yeah. That I wanted You're to like spotlight. <laughs> so when, yeah, so when I told everybody I wanted to sing in the talent show, it was like, what, sing, sing what? You know what I mean? You yeah, know? yeah. It took me serious. And then even with my family, I told my mom that I was going to be singing in the talent show, and she was like, sing, sing what? <laughs> you know? And so you never sang around the house like to your mom. She never you sing. Never heard me. No. Oh, what? My had heard me a couple of times and he was like yeah she sounds pretty good but to be honest he was just being nice because I was out of control I had no vocal control whatsoever like I was up there yeah okay I still believe that you know I, I could have been in this talent show and um my mom she was I, she, she's gonna kill me for telling this story but it's the truth my mom was, <laughs> she was a because my mom was a hairdresser right and she had a she had yeah. a so she's the first thing she says is all my all my customers, their kids go to your school. They better come in first, me, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and now she's out there putting your song on her, her happy birthday video. Now I'll boss about you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, sing Bonkino. 
show, <laughs> but I had to save all my lunch money to buy the tickets because they were not really trying to come. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. My lunch money in my house, and they came, and my mom was like in the in the. <laughs> pressure, eh? What a pressure! Just waiting to hear what this girl has, you know. And then yeah. I, I was embarrassed because when I started singing, trust me, in that auditorium, you knew who my mom was. You knew where she was sitting. She. <laughs> oh my god! Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> so I guess you did good. <laughs> so after that, there was no question. Okay, Tanya can sing. You know. And then yes. From, from there, um, I got, I remember my first studio session was, um, I was about 16 and a sound called Desert Storm. They brought me to the studio and I went and sang some dubs and mm -hmm. that was, that was good. That was interesting. The only thing I remember was, um, I didn't mind singing, but you couldn't get me to do an intro. So yeah, no talking whatsoever. I just wanted the beat to start and I would sing. And you just sing. Not even, not even, um, this is time, not even, nothing. I'm not a <laughs> word. I'm yes. Extremely, extremely shy, you know? And then I pretty much did like a lot of jobs from that. I was always like, you know, just singing for local sound systems. Um, mm -hmm. All the covers you could think of, all the R&B covers, you know, they loved me for that. And at that time I couldn't write songs. So yeah, I just, yeah. all the different, you know, all the R&B songs that, that I knew. And um, by, I think I was about 19 and my dad decided he would put me on my first big show. And yes. that was, um, I think it was called Reggae by the Sea. That was like an annual show that he used to hold, host with um, Beanie Man. So it was okay. like for Beanie Man and Shock and Vibes crew. Yes, that's a crew. <laughs> until they said, all right, your time now. <laughs> yeah, you start funny you say shocking vibes. I had Kirk, uh, little Kirk on two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was interesting. I remember I thought I was ready. And even like my whole set and what I thought I was going to do for that show, that was so funny because it did, it, I guess that's when I learned too that um, not everything that's happening and, and considered you know, the latest in Canada is exactly what's happening in Jamaica at the time. Yes. It yes. Is. So I learned the hard way because everybody kind of just stand up stiff from me. I was like, whoa. <laughs> no, but you know, they always say, my dad used to say, if somebody's watching you, know, you can get them to stand still and pay attention to you and not talk. That means you have them. So okay. that's a good sign. You're used to people making noise. When they stop, you think like, okay, that, that means they're actually taking you in and they're listening to you and they like what you're doing. I remember my heart was racing. I was like thinking, all right, how do I go to the next song? Because this one, no. We're <laughs> <laughs> you're like, wheel up, next one. <laughs> but I remember I, 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 I laughed because I remember when I was down there young at my young age too, and that time they were flinging buckles and I was terrified that, am I going to get a buckle thing on me? So I know that feeling. <laughs> I was terrified. <laughs> my dad had said something like he popped up at my rehearsal, and yes. I I was the band was playing like a fast rhythm. I remember it was called Brocco, you know. Yeah, yeah. When he popped out, he was just like, "Let me talk, baby. Let me talk to you a minute." So I was like, "Oh boy," you know. Yeah. Kind of song you I sing. I'm like, "What kind of rhythm that?" I'm like, <laughs> "The boy coming like the Brocco, Brocco left you." <laughs> That's like because you're used to singing them R and B on the rhythm, and then when you go on the reggae rhythm, the rhythm got left you. <laughs> you're used to holding notes. <laughs> I'm a major. I thought I was like, hey, this is this is it, you know? Yeah, you thought and you were in there. What the Jamaicans do, you understand? So I wanted to represent, but he's like, no, man. And that's when he told me, like, just be yourself, you know, just do your thing. So I slowed it yeah. down. I slowed it down because I realized that's not really my thing. <laughs> yeah. And then you got to do your final, finally, the first, first track that you recorded. It, mm -hmm. You linked up with a Dr. Rad. Is that how you uh, say with me was the track? You you ended up 
creating a good friendship with him and done mm. a lot of work with that producer. Um, it's actually, I was thinking about it the other day because it's like we've we've been working together for so long. I think it's been like a good, what, 15 years now or something like that. So um, I was like, how did we even get into contact? But then I remembered Sample King called me. Okay long time ago like about 15 years ago sample king called me and he was um i think he wanted me to do a combination some type of song he wanted me to do with him and he gave me the address for the studio and then that was yes. dr red right so yes he went i remember um doing the song with sample and then i think he, i think i remember dr red like he just kept saying you know um, I like your vibe. I like your, I like your voice. I think he just kept looking at me thinking, you know, I can work with her. Like she's a little rough around the edges, but I can, I can work with her. He saw a lot of potential. Yeah. And he I, can get, he can get you under rhythm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm just laughing when you said you left the, the rhythm, left you with your dad. <laughs> and I remember he just, you know, one day he called me and I, he said, um, you know, I'm going to offer you something that <clears throat> I don't normally offer to many, but I, I believe in your talent, you know, so I'm going to say, I'm going to, it's, you have an open door policy with me, but I mean, nice. I mean, that's nice. you know what I mean? And let's see what we can, what we can do. So I, went and it's, he's, he played a rhythm and it was funny because the rhythm that he played for me, I liked it. I really liked it. And, um, I started writing, I think right there on the spot, I started writing. And then we ended up recording it after. And that was when I, that's when I got to understand that um, rhythms are different than, you know, like singles. Because in my mind, I wrote a song, right? That I really yeah. love. Now this is like my single, like I'm going to put this out to the world, you know? But within like about a week's time, I heard about four or five different on the same rhythm. Yeah, you, that's a juggling. So I start, I got confused because I'm like, <laughs> I thought that was my rhythm. You're saying, <laughs> why is it out there? <laughs> why is it on my beat? <laughs> <laughs> that now, you know, you, then you know how to say, no, I want exclusive rhythm. I want just me on it. <laughs> I just, I didn't realize that it was a compilation. I yes. Yes. Young in it and I didn't know. And I was so eager to just be on it. And I loved it, you know, but, um, yeah. Funny, it's funny though because that song um, it ended up getting in Ron Nelson's hands, and nice. and also Scabbage. Actually, no, I think Scabbage was actually the first person. That was nice. it. was he got it first. I went to want to ride, <laughs> and it's funny because um, I didn't have a name at that time. I didn't know what I was to call myself, and it's my first song and first time going to the radio. So yeah. I'm just gonna be Tanya Pringle, cause I yeah. can't, can't think of nothing. So it's Tanya Pringle, right? Yeah, and yeah. Got someone to make a CD so I could bring it to to Scavage, and um, I I said just write Tanya Pringle on it, cause I don't know, I don't have a name. That's just what that's my name, so that's what it is. And yeah, I said when I told them how early their interview was, they were like, okay, well I'll make the CD for you, but I'm gonna tie it on my door in a plastic bag, and you can just. Pick it up when you're on your way. Don't wake me up, you know? So Yeah, yeah. Okay, no problem. And then when I got there and I opened the bag and I look at the CD, I seen in big bubble letters, it said Tanya P. I was so mad. I was like, I said Tanya Pringle. Why does it say Tanya P? Yeah. <laughs> so I called. I'm like, I thought I told you to put Tanya Pringle. He says, man, I used the wrong font and I didn't have enough CD. I, did, I ran out of CD. So listen. Yeah. You got your CD, man. <laughs> <laughs> but then he made, there goes your name. You, you kept it. Kept it. Well, I was already on my way to the radio. And I wasn't going yeah. to oh, the name is written wrong. Sorry about that. I was just, I wanted to make a good impression. And yeah. Well, at least you had a logo on it. Some people at them times never even put logo. They handwrite it. <laughs> for that too. But I was really trying to make a good first impression. So... When I seen the, the name, I was so disappointed at first, but then I remember when Scabba first played the song and yes. his voice, when he says, when he said Tanya P, it just sounded so official. I'm like, oh, I hit that, <laughs> you know? 
Yeah, like we can work with this. <laughs> yeah. And then you went on after that. I mean, um, did he work on this album that Dr. Rad? Uh, was he a big part of this album as well, Concrete Rose? This whole album is me and Dr. Rad, except nice. for 13. <laughs> Nice, nice, very nice. It's nice. Once you get a vibe with somebody, it's always like it's it's nice to branch out. But sometimes you just get a connection with a producer, and I know once it it sits good and, and it feels right, you keep that going. It's a as a chemistry between you and him. Clearly, you know what it is too. Something about just like um, you know, just starting out with him from my very first song, and you know, no nomination. He produced that like. It just only seemed fitting that we we have this co collection, like this this work of art, like this one body of work that we could say, okay, you know what, we did this. So yes, I I was just I was so excited. Like I honestly I could have worked with like so many producers, and but for my like I've I've put out an EP before, but for my first like you know official album, I just wanted it to be my producer like me and him like we've been through everything yeah. we've been through everything and he's been there for me for my whole career he's molded me into the artist that i am today you know yeah songs that's that, like that's dr rad like i write he comes up with the, the 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 rhythms and we just we work you know so yes i can't leave out i want to talk about of course, you were nominated for a Juno Award. How was that feeling? It was surreal. It was surreal. I remember just, I couldn't, I don't know. I remember submitting and it was just one of those things where I submitted, but I, didn't, I wasn't looking for anything from it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I wasn't, I wasn't thinking I was even going to get nominated, you know, and then I don't know why, but I guess I just wasn't, I didn't think I was there yet. Mm -hmm. So I just was like. So now do you think you're there? Oh, I think I'm more than there. I think, <laughs> I think I'm more than due. I've paid my dues. I've been consistent, you know, putting out really, really good music. But at the same time, I look at the years and I know that they're doing it too. You know what I mean? So I understand that we all can't get nominated. There's only like, what, five spots or something. So, yeah, it's hard. There's a lot of submissions and to get it down to five is tough already. So if you make the top five, it's a darn honor. Yes. But what I will say, though, just from being nominated, I just think it's one of those things where I just I respected the fact so much that they acknowledged my work that that to me is like it was just like a win. You know what I mean? Like, even yep. when, oh, you've been nominated. Oh, but you never won. Like to me, I won. I won. Just being nominated alone is just an accomplishment in itself, just to be recognized, you know? So. Yes. And I can't leave out. I just want to run, a, run down some things fast before we run out of time. You also got a Canadian Reggae Music Award. Yeah. Um, also, you've um, something got to give did really well for you when that came out, played on G9, <clears throat> sorry, G98, 7 FM. Um, number one spot on Styles FM in Jamaica that went. And of course, you also received Reggae Exclusive Award for Top Single, what you know about love. So you've really, really did a lot. Um, I'm sure there's other awards I probably don't know about. If, if I left them out, you know, definitely tell me and tell my viewers. Um, and I'll go back again. Please follow her on Instagram at Tanya P Music. And check out the videos, Tanya P Music YouTube. Um, go get the album, Concrete Rose. Um, you know, girl, you're strong. Uh, you gotta. I, 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 you are. You are, and you, you're a big influence to a lot of artists out there. And and I'm sure they're looking up to you and watching what you're doing. Um, is there anybody like you said you have? Dr. Rad, you're working with. Is there any other producers that, if you had the opportunity to work with, you'd want to work with? Um, there's lots. Um, I, would, I know Genius. I was supposed to, um, you know, try to work with him, but that's always been one of those things where you kind of give a lot of, you have to give a lot of notice, and you got to be down there in Jamaica in order to make those type of things happen. Sometimes, so yeah, 
haven't quite gotten the opportunity. Um, I know uh, with Freddie McGregor, you know, he's talked so many times, especially because of something's got to give. Like, I remember when he first heard it, he called me and was like, girl, <laughs> thing, you know, and it's just with other artists, I feel like they reach out and they would love to even help and, you know, do certain things, but they're artists as well. And it's hard for them to be, you know, kind of bring you in and do certain things, you know, but just to even get the acknowledgement just makes you know that, okay, so you're on the right path. So I'm sure that certain things are going to, you know, come to fruition is I just got to keep pushing, you know? Yes. Um, any artists that you'd like to collaborate with any genre? Oh, before, before I even say that, mm -hmm. I can't leave out made it with the queen of hip hop, Mishy Me. You did that collaboration. Yeah. And Mishy's like my big sister. You yes, know? she is. God bless her. Big up the queen, Mishy Me. <laughs> much as I, I, I love her, um, you know, as a, just a big sister and a mentor, I've looked up to her, like, since I was a kid, like, you know, that's, uh, that's Mishy, you know, like, I just yep. really seen her on TV. And I remember it was my dad, actually, that made that link. And I thought, it was, yeah. oh, my best, my good friend, uh, the best rapper, female rapper in Canada. I'm like, sure, daddy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah, daddy got the hookups. Daddy knows what's up. <laughs> And even since, you know, he's, he's passed, she's been there and helping me and, you know, single or oh, made it just into to like a whole nother audience, you know, in the hip hop world. So I have to yes. miss you for that. And um, I don't know if you did, if you do a song with the queen, I guess it would just be fitting to just, let's go for Drake. Why not? <laughs> right? Hey, you don't know. They say what you put out in the universe comes right back at you. So, hey, you never know. You never know. Is there anybody that you want to shout out before we get out of here? Um, shout out my kids, my mom, Dr. Rad. Um, who else? King Arts Creation. You know, from day one, he's been doing like my posters, my websites. He's made all the all the nice flyers and you know even some of my photo shoots um my last photo shoot my sister mamba lifestyle you know just shout out my team starliners, starliners entertainment you know it's not just starliners live on facebook we actually have a studio we have a independent label so we're trying to do a lot of things right now to even help other upcoming artists so yeah. Yes, please please send out the information for that as well if people want to get into the studio numbers or contact or for sure starlinersentertainment.com so you can definitely check out that and again all your social media for them yeah everything is like pretty much just starliners entertainment or you can also just look me up Tanya P music and yeah you'll find the link to starliners entertainment and is Molly still spinning over there on Facebook right now? Probably, yeah. And knowing because I'm not there right now, he's going to go overtime. <laughs> he's going to go overtime. Um, let my viewers know when you guys are live on Facebook. Every Sunday and every Thursday from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. All right, then. Girl, thank you so much for being on the show. I wish you nothing but success with this album. I know it's going to do very well. I'm sure it's going to be up for the Juno. You got to make sure that's in there. And I'll be rooting for you. And, you know, anything, I'm here for you, girl. I've been playing it. I rolled four tracks this past Thursday, and it repeats on the other shows. And I will definitely still keep pumping it every week. Um, enough love to you, and thank you for being on the show. And yeah, I I'll have, catch go ahead, hon. Before even my first song, I used to listen to you on the radio. And just doing this interview right now, this sit down, it's an honor. Oh, Respect. Yes. Oh, thank you, girl. And and like I say, as long as I've been in the business, we uh, uh, were the elders. But you mm -hmm. inspire me as well, sweetheart. And again, congrats on everything. And just keep shining. Love you, girl. Thank you. Thank you. Love you, too. Blessing. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in tonight. It's Fired Up Network here. It's Tanya Mulling Show. Catch you same time, same place next week. Have a blessed evening. I'll take care. Bye.